Perhaps the most fascinating thing for us in physics is the attempt to explain how various invisible forces work. And when, as children, we would take apart some old television hoping to rip out the speaker and get our hands on that wonderful magnet, we had no idea that the way magnets repel or attract each other involves so much interesting physics. Today, we're going to try to figure out how the physics of magnetic attraction works. Or, to put it simply and in a way everyone can understand how magnets actually magnetize things. Just to be clear, there are permanent magnets and there are non-permanent or temporary magnets. Right now, we'll be talking about permanent magnets because temporary magnets really deserve a separate video. And the permanent magnets are exactly what we started our explanation with. These are those very same strange black things that can attract other equally strange black things and that are so much fun to move around on the table to make another magnet dance on top. The most important trigger we need to use here and the main thing we should look at is, in fact, the structure of the material. That very strange piece of mysterious iron we're looking at which has these properties, also has a structure. This structure contains certain atoms that are arranged in a specific way. And these atoms, of course, also have a certain composition. When we talk about atomic structure, we need to understand that all of these are constantly moving particles. We look at the structure of a solid material and most likely expect to see a crystal lattice. In reality, a crystal lattice is, let's say, a simplification, a visualization of how it can be represented. In fact, of course, a crystal lattice should be drawn not in three dimensions, but in four. Or, as they said in the famous movie Marty, you're only thinking in three dimensions. In reality, we also need to take time into account. And with the crystal lattice, we would also need to factor in time. A crystal lattice is made up of ordered atoms that are not only positioned in characteristic places, but are also constantly moving. Is it any wonder that this thermal motion exists not only in the atoms themselves, but also in the subatomic particles that make up these atoms? For example, the very electrons that surround atoms are also in constant motion. In reality, electrons do not orbit like a planet around a nucleus, but rather appear at certain points. But this does not prevent them from forming certain characteristic locations, which have become the orbits or orbitals of these electrons. And so, even though electrons do not rotate like a wheel around its axis, we can assume that as electrons move, during their thermal motion, there is an interesting phenomenon. And you should remember interesting phenomena from electrical engineering. It consists in the fact that a moving charge always generates a magnetic field around itself. If we have atoms with electrons moving around them, these electrons will inevitably generate a magnetic field. And then everything happens in a rather interesting, quite simple and fairly linear way. Since the electrons are usually disordered in their motion, with each electron moving in its own direction, the magnetic moment that arises from each moving charge also has an irregular, non-standard direction for each one. And if these directions suddenly align, the resulting force will increase. When these directions of magnetic moment suddenly coincide, the forces add up and the overall effect becomes stronger. This essentially is a basic explanation of what happens in a typical permanent magnet. And from there, everything is very simple. There are different materials that, either naturally or under the influence of a strong external magnetic field, can align the magnetic moment of electrons in a certain direction. And when it becomes aligned, we get what we call magnetic force. We get exactly what we observe when playing with those little magnets from the TV. And for general terminology, it's also useful to understand that the regions where this electron orientation, this alignment of moments occurs, are called domains, magnetic domains. And it's precisely these that all of physics works with trying to make materials magnetic or non-magnetic. But things would be very simple if we stopped there. In reality, there are much more complex questions. And one of the most interesting and intriguing questions is, why does a moving charge suddenly create a magnetic field? And yes, it's worth mentioning that not only a magnetic field arises, but an electromagnetic field. But for simplicity, we'll focus on the magnetic field. And here we encounter another interesting mystery, another paradox that is about to shock you. And although you've probably already gotten used to the fact that things don't happen quite the way we'd like, that things aren't as simple as they seem. And so, my friends, the magnetic field is an illusion. The magnetic field does not exist. And to understand this, we need to have at least some grasp of the theory of relativity. The magnetic field is described as a certain, an imaginary phenomenon characterized by the fact that charges move unevenly. Imagine that you have two charges moving relative to each other. These two charges, of course, are in some frame of reference. We remember that in physics, there is inevitably an electrostatic interaction or Coulomb force. 
It has already, let's say, been confirmed and it has been tested, measured and explained. There is, in fact, its own particle responsible for this interaction, and all of these are separate topics that also protect it, so to speak. But the fact remains, the Coulomb force inevitably acts between charges. As long as it works like this, everything is fine and simple. But now imagine that we move the reference frames to other points. For example, we create two reference frames, one associated with one charge and the other with another charge. Will this cause the Coulomb interactions to disappear? Of course not. We remember that we have the principle of similarity, the principle of relativity, which states that all physical laws work the same way in all reference frames and in all accessible corners of the universe. One could nitpick here and say that there are surely regions where the principle doesn't work. But we are basing our discussion on classical physics and focusing on it. And from classical physics it follows that, for example, Newton's law works everywhere. And in exactly the same way, the Coulomb interaction works everywhere. This means that when we change the reference frame, we cannot in any way claim that the Coulomb force has disappeared. The Coulomb force will continue to operate regardless. Now let's look at how a moving charge from another frame of reference will perceive what is happening in its own frame of reference, or vice versa. All the confusion begins when we try to work with Coulomb forces, as happened, for example, in the twin paradox, where one twin became younger while the other aged. All of this happened because time is relative. But it's not just time that's relative. In fact, everything that operates within a given frame of reference is relative. Essentially, the Coulomb force will be perceived differently by charges in different frames of reference. This follows from the fundamentals of the theory of relativity. When we say that this interaction has changed, we mean that the Coulomb force hasn't disappeared, based on everything we've said before, but it has started to work a little differently. And this so-called apparent effect, which arises from the fact that everything works differently in different frames of reference, except for the fundamental physical laws, is what we perceive as the magnetic field. In other words, modern theory states that the magnetic field that exists around a moving charge is due to the fact that there is a Coulomb interaction, which always exists, but in different frames of reference it is perceived differently. And to put it another way, the magnetic field is an apparent interaction that doesn't actually exist. The magnetic field is, in fact, the Coulomb force as seen from another frame of reference. When we talked about the formation of a strange structure that contributes to the emergence of a general magnetic field, we said that the basis of the phenomenon is a moving electron around which a magnetic field exists. And we noted that it is precisely around a moving charge that such metamorphoses occur. Such metamorphoses do not occur around a stationary charge. And this tells us that, for us, the basis is a moving charge. Why is everything connected to a moving charge? It's precisely because, in fact, we shouldn't really be talking about the magnetic field, 